Hello everyone. Here we are going to discuss about orifice and mouthpiece. These are both devices used for measurement of discharge. Now an orifice is simply an opening, maybe of any, any shape, circular, square, rectangular or any kind of other shape or some irregular shape even. Now the flow through this kind of orifice will depend on the head difference on either side of the orifice. So let's take for example a tank. So this tank is filled with water up to some level and on the side of the tank we have made a hole which will be called an orifice. Now if we make a hole near the top of the tank here then whatever is the velocity with which water will come out and we make another hole at the bottom of the tank here this velocity will be much higher than this velocity that means this velocity of water coming out of these orifices is governed by the head of water available on the other side the orifice may also be provided on the at the bottom surface of the tank and then it will be under this entire head of water now let's consider another situation where we have a partition in a tank so this is suppose a rectangular tank and in this rectangular tank we have made it two parts by providing some kind of partition wall so on one side we have this much amount of water on the other side we have slightly lower level of water so in that case also water will come flow from this side to this side through this orifice and if we make both these levels equal in that case there will be no flow if we make this level lower then there will be some flow if we make this level even lower then the flow will increase if we make this level higher then also flow will increase that means it will depend on the difference of available head between this side and this side in case of the previous example here the difference was between the head available on this side and head available on this side is zero or in terms of pressure it is atmospheric pressure on the other side it was atmospheric pressure plus this amount of water head so the difference was equal to the water head there is another type of this device which is called a mouthpiece so a mouthpiece is similar to orifice but there is a small tube attached to this opening and it will be called an called a mouthpiece if the length of this tube is approximately two to three times the diameter if it is smaller than that then we will still call it an orifice and if it is larger than that then we'll have to call it a proper pipe we'll not simply call it mouthpiece but it will be a pipe and why there is a difference between a mouthpiece and a pipe we'll learn about it sometime later so this is a mouthpiece so in the mouthpiece also similar kind of principle is applicable if you have higher water on this side then the velocity will be more and uh, and vice versa if you have lower difference of head then the velocity will be less now let's try to understand mathematically how much will be the velocity so for that let's draw an orifice on a water tank the height of water available above this orifice is say h now this h is measured from the surface of the liquid or water up to the center of this orifice and that is because this orifice diameter is quite smaller compared to this total head but if the 
or if his diameter is much larger, in that case we may not be able to make this kind of assumption that is the head is equal to whatever is the head at the center. So in that case we may have to take head up to this point and then head up to this point and do some additional calculations. But we are not going to discuss it right now, we will simply discuss a simple situation where the orifice is much smaller than that available height. Now, let's first discuss the result. We are not going to the derivation at first. Velocity through this orifice will be given by V equal to root over 2GH. You remember this formula? It can be converted to H equal to V square by 2G. So this was the velocity head. Which means that whatever was the potential head or pressure head at this point, after it has come out of the orifice, it is completely converted to velocity head. And we are going to prove that using Bernoulli's equation. It's quite simple actually. Let's write the Bernoulli's equation for this point and this point. So this point is outside the tank where there is a velocity v and this point is inside the tank where the velocity is zero because inside the tank the velocity of water is uh, zero except for very close to this orifice there will be some velocity component but we are not considering here we are considering at a point little bit away from the orifice so at this point if we write the Bernoulli's equation it will be p1 by rho g which is actually equal to this h then p1 square by 2g which will be later in equating to zero plus z1 and since we are considering this point and this point at the same levels so this z1 will be equal to z2 so on the other side let's write p2 square by 2 p2 by rho g v2 square by 2g and z2 so p1 square by rho g is this h v1 square by 2g is 0 because velocity inside the tank is 0 and z1 and z2 gets cancelled because we are considering two points at the same levels and on the uh, on this side uh, p1 is p2 is 0 now because it has been shot outside the tank into the atmosphere so there is no water above this jet of water this flowing jet and uh, therefore the p1 is equal p2 is equal to zero and v2 is the velocity that we required that is v so now we can write that this h is equal to v2 square by 2g or v equal to root over 2g h So now, whatever is this velocity, let's try to look at it from a magnified uh, diagram. So when the water comes out, it doesn't simply come out like this. There is some kind of contraction because these streamlines will try to converge because they are all coming from all the directions so there will be some small amount of contraction so therefore when we are considering this v equal to root over 2 g h that velocity is not actually velocity at this point because at this point the velocities of all the streamlines are different one velocity one streamline is going this way the others are going this way so all are flowing in different directions that is they are in and they're about to converge so when they all become horizontal or parallel in this case um, so 
at some section they will all become parallel to each other and that section is called the vena contracta vena contracta so whatever this velocity v that we have calculated it is actually velocity at this point and not at this point now practically this velocity will not be equal to root over 2 gh because as it crosses this barrier uh, this opening there will be some friction on the walls and therefore the actual velocity will be slightly less and therefore to get the actual velocity we will have to multiply this with some coefficient cv which is called coefficient of velocity and therefore our actual velocity v actual becomes equal to coefficient of velocity multiplied by the theoretical velocity root over 2gh so this is the actual velocity which is slightly less than the theoretical velocity and therefore this value of this coefficient of velocity is always slightly less than 1 it may be 0 0.8 0 0.9 and so on now this is about velocity but what about discharge you see discharge is velocity into area now we have seen that velocity is not what we calculated and the area is also not what we calculated so velocity is the theoretical velocity multiplied by this coefficient is cv and area which is actually this area and not the area of the orifice itself so let's call the area of the orifice as a and the actual area of the jet when all the streamlines are parallel that is equal to um, ac so to find the actual discharge what do we have to do we have to multiply the actual velocity with the actual area so the actual velocity is cv into root over 2gh and the actual area is again some uh, coefficient multiplied by the actual uh, multiplied by the area of the orifice so this coefficient cc which is called coefficient of contraction is actually the ratio between the actual area of the uh, jet of water at the vena contracta divided by the area of the orifice itself so therefore the actual discharge is given as the actual area is cc multiplied by a which is the actual area that is ac and multiplied by the actual velocity which is cv into root over 2 gh which is the theoretical discharge theoretical velocity so now we can again write it as cv into cc multiplied by a into root over 2 gh now a into root over 2 gh is our theoretical discharge and therefore um, in one of the previous lectures we discussed about coefficient of discharge so these two terms combined we can write as some other coefficient cd which is the coefficient of discharge and multiplied with the actual discharge a into root over 2gh so therefore that 
actual discharge is given as CD into the theoretical discharge. 